How we doing? Good, good. What's up? What up, Terry? How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. So one of the things uh, Dan was talking about, how you wanted to work on getting yards after the catch. Yeah. Has that been, has that been your big thing this offseason? What are you doing to kind of attack yeah. that? Yeah. Um, I think that's uh, definitely at the top of my list. I think probably the main thing route running wise is uh, my feet getting in and out of breaks at the top. Um, I think I could be a lot more efficient in that. And I've been working really hard and uh, improving that in the offseason. And uh, it's showing up a lot in, in the film that we've been doing so far. And uh, running after the catch is one of the things that uh, just in my game I feel like is, is okay, um, that I feel like could take another step. And I think that's just putting yourself in those positions in practice, like not just being okay, taking the ball and running straight for 10 yards, even though that's what we're asked to do. It's like trying to uh, size up a DB when you get down the field, try to use a stiff arm, not trying to hurt your guys, but just putting yourself in those live type of situations to be prepared for the game. And, um, you know, it's a balance for me because I always want to protect the football. That's my number one uh, objective when I'm carrying the ball. But at the same time, I think uh, when you can make one guy miss, two guys miss, and you get those extra three, four yards, those add up over the course of a game. And um, I think uh, the, the elite receivers really do that at a high level. So um, <clears throat> that's someone I see myself being. And I just think I've put some good things on, on film so far, but it um, – now's the time to really hone in on that for me you've obviously played with a couple quarterbacks in mm -hmm. your time here maybe you've heard that <laughs> yeah um, another one with Jaden. what are some of your early impressions of him what stands out to you about yeah him? uh he's he's uh he's very charismatic um i think he's really personal when he walks into the building he just has a calm demeanor about him he's very approachable so guys have no problem whether you're an offensive lineman receiver running back talking to him, communicating with what the objective is of this play or what he's seeing or what he's thinking. And uh, he came in really prepared. I feel like um, when he was getting one's reps or where he's working with the twos, like he does a great job of um, getting the most out of his out of the reps that he needs to to accomplish. And I think um, he's going to be a really good player because of the time and the work that he puts in. Like, I don't think I've had a young quarterback that really has come in and within the first week, he's like, hey, can we get this rep route or let me get this rep after practice? And uh, so it's, it's exciting for me because, you know, that opens the door where they're, because you know they got a lot on their plate, but at the same time when you know <clears throat> there's that open door of communication and he's not afraid to get that work in before or after practice or talk through things, it makes um, the growth part a lot quicker. And uh, he's, he's, he's just, a, he's very talented, but he's extremely humble as well. And I, I'm looking forward to see how he continues to grow. And uh, he's, it's it's hard to pinpoint when we, you're around him more. You can really tell, like, he's humble, but he's confident in his ability. Like, he's played at the highest level. He's played against really great competition, and he knows that he can make all the throws. So um, he's not putting the cart before the horse. He's, he's literally taking this thing day by day, and um, he's doing a really good job right now. You've been through a bunch of mini camps. Mm -hmm. Not training camp yet, but we noticed a difference. Yeah. Do you notice the difference in the staff and what you guys are doing during this time? Uh, definitely. Um, I think Coach Quinn and the entire staff have uh, really enforced not just effort, but the competition aspect of uh, football. And we're in practice now, and guys are really like pissed off when the offense loses or the defense loses the day. Like, I've Coming from, you know, I'm far removed from college, but it reminds me a lot of the college days where you're just getting after each other. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think on the schedule it says commanders play the commanders, but that competitiveness makes each and everybody better because you want to be the one who's winning that rep. You want to be the one, the side of the ball is winning that practice. You want to win in the weight room. And it's a constant mentality that they're driving home uh, to where you always have to be in competition mode. That's, that's, I think that's a, the game of life, you know what I mean? You're either getting better or you're getting worse. And I think <clears throat> Coach Quinn really allows us to lay out a plan for ourselves, like for myself getting better at the top of my routes or getting better at run after catch. He sets the standard for all of us to get better and, and, and pinpoint the things we need to get better on. And then he gives us time before or after practice to get better on it, working with our position coach. So he makes the time um, for us to be able to work on the things that we need to improve on. But uh, I just think the number one thing that stood out is um, the, the competition that's in and out of the building every day. DQ told us this morning that the offensive system is installed and that there's a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Is there like a 
number of plays or pages in the playbook? Like, like how much stuff are we talking about here? Yeah. Um, I mean, I've been in multiple offenses, and, you know, this is on par with all of them. Like, you, for this point in the season, you're going to get pretty much – all your playbook in for the most part. I think when you get towards the season, it's more game plan specific. So you have your plays, but then you're game planning which plays that may work against the coverage you're going to see this week or um, what have you. But um, I just think they did a great job, really. The first few weeks, we didn't really even, well, the first week, we didn't even really talk a lot of X's and O's. We just got to know each other. We did a lot of team building things. And I noticed, you start to notice the, the, the guard drops with everybody on the team. It's like, yeah, we're here to compete for jobs. Yeah, we're teammates, but at the same time, like, we are really fighting for one another. You know what I mean? And we're bringing the, the best out of each other, and and we're making a commitment each and every day to bring our best selves. And then if we don't have it, then we know somebody else is going to pick us up. And so you know that that trust that is being built right now uh, allows you to go through the ups and the downs of a season, which every team goes through. Um, I know I got a little off topic, but I think, you know, the X's and O's are going to come, but I, um, the camaraderie that I feel on this team that's being built right now is extremely special, and I think it makes the, the, the grind a lot easier. Uh, Cliff runs a unique offense compared to other NFL, mm -hmm. especially with the way he uses receivers. How do you anticipate your role changing, and how do you view the offense from a receiver perspective specifically? Yeah, um, I mean, I think – he likes to really push the ball down the field. Um, he likes to be balanced. He likes to uh, give different looks to a defense. You know, we're going to uh, not too, try to get too much into it, but, you know, we're going to use some motion, move some guys around and things of that nature. Um, I think for myself, I feel comfortable playing any of the positions that is, that is asked, whether it's the slot, the outside positions. And the um, unique part about our offense is I don't think necessarily you play the X or the Z because depending on the formation or the hash, you can be the opposite. You could you can be the X, but then you're to the field now. You're the Z, so you got to really learn uh, the entire concept and know where you're out in the field, which I think makes everybody smarter players because you don't pigeonhole yourself. Ah, I just play X. You know, I, mean, I only know this position. Like you get in two minutes, you're the Z. Now you got to know what to do. You may have the clear out route, or you may have the backside dig. Like you got to know. Uh, what you're doing. So I think he doesn't just say, like, we're going to do this offense. He's really trying to create an offense that fits our personnel really well. That, that field boundary thing, uh, yeah. that's a thing in college, but it seems like it's more unique to Cliff. Is that is that something you're used to seeing in other offenses you've been in, in the NFL? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think if if I'm on the left hash, like, technically I'm, I'm the X, you know, I'm in the boundary. But if we're on the right hash, I'm still on the left side. I'm really the Z in the concept because I'm to the field, I'm to the strength of the tight end. So um, I've been in offenses like it's similar like that before. And, um, you know, I just think he – he one thing I think that's really stood out is the compliments of our routes that we have so far. Um, I feel like we have a chance to really um, run similar stems, but there's different routes off those stems and things like that, which I think for a receiver like myself who uh, you get – you know, a really good look at DBs and they study your film, they study your splits, like having routes uh, that look the same but break off at different different angles is extremely important because it feels like you have some versatility in your bag to go out with versus like you got this hitch again, your backside, like that's all you got, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I, I, he's just been a, re a really good player, person to work with and he's been really communicative with the leaders and how we want this offense to look like and some of the ideas that we may have as well. So it's it's been a really uh, cool transition. You talk about the transitions, your mm -hmm. third offense in three years, probably your fourth in six years. Yeah. How do you not kind of build up some barriers? Of yeah. Like, Man, I got to do this again? Right. Um, I think, you know, human nature is, is always um, – a factor in whatever you do in life. But I think I try to make a conscious choice of coming in with a new year mentality each and every year. And I think it's easy because we've had so many changes and um, it's been great working with Marcus and Jaden and Jeff and Sam, all of everybody. Like it's, it's been great with working with all the quarterbacks and um, I, I just have a mentality of not really being complacent. Like I, I try to really focus on the things that I, I can come back better at this year, and I've been working my, my butt off to do that. So um, I think the easy thing, and when I was younger, you're like, dang, like you just want that consistency. You know what I mean? Like you want that um, something that you could depend on, but like life isn't 
life isn't always like that. So um, I've I've been reinvigorated because of just the the energy that DQ brings into our building each and every day, and and the coaches as well. Like it's fun competing, you know what I mean. And sometimes I could get lost in the grind, but um, I think the reason why you make it here at this level is because you you fall in love with the competition of it, and I think the competition breeds the success because. Um, that is really where you the iron truly sharpens iron. So you know other guys are going to make plays, but you get excited to go in there and and know that um, the next day we're going to go right back after the defense. So um, for myself, I'm just looking forward to continue to grow with the quarterbacks that we have. Um, I'm in year six now, which is extreme blessing and um, leader one of the leaders in our room. And I just try to take the bull by the horns with that. And so uh, that's really been my focus and. Uh, you know, I'm excited for another year. To us, it's looked like you're being more vocal on the sideline, trying yeah. to help young guys. Definitely. Is that something you decided this offseason? Uh, I think that's uh, been a part of my maturation process as a leader. Um, I've always seen myself as somebody that was a, uh, a leader by example. Um, but from coaches and other teammates I've had over the years, um, guys like to – hear what I have to say for whatever reason sometimes, you know? And I think the biggest thing where I've tried to figure out where I fit in with my vocal leadership is I never wanted to be like a dictator, you know what I mean? I never wanted to tell guys what to do or, or be a yeller or things like that. Like when I say something, I want it to have power, I want it to have meaning. And I hope, you know, the guys would feel the same way if they were to ask them that question. Um, Cause I want to see all these guys win, man. Like it's, it's hard to make it in this league and to stay in a career. And so any way I could help the receivers, the DBs, I'm talking to some of the linemen, Johnny who's who's rehabbing his foot, you know what I mean? Like everybody has a role and everybody has a different story and path. And so if I could share what I've been through, my testimony to help them or uh, do things that kind of slow down the process, I'm gonna try to do that because um, we need everybody from the rookies to the 10 year vets to, to make this thing work. So um, more so I, I, I try to speak to what I, what I know and, and really those honest conversations that I try to have with guys where they know I'm coming from a good place. And I think I'm not the type of guy where I'm just the one talking at them. Like if they see something, like I could take a coaching point from Luke McCaffrey. I could take a coaching point from Dayami, from Jahan, from uh, Marcus, from anybody, you know, like I think that's what makes you a great player when you can really uh, be coachable from anybody and, and not take it from a personal standpoint. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> Good. Yeah. Um, going back to what you were saying about Cliff and mm -hmm. the offense, how is he as a teacher in teaching all this? Yeah, I mean, I think he does a really great job of making things simple, first and foremost. He doesn't overcoach. And I think that's the trust that he has in our group and his, and his coaches, our position coaches, to um, fill in the details. So we'll have an install meeting, and um, it'll be a good amount of time. But then our position coaches will have time, and we'll make it specific to that position. And so um, – and then we'll come in and have a walkthrough. Um, and then after that, we'll have another walkthrough. And so I don't think there's been a time where I've come out here and I'm kind of worried about what I got. You know what I mean? And when you get into certain offices, there could be so many details where you could be overwhelmed. And I think then it it forces – it kind of separates guys in the sense that, like, one guy may study more than another guy. But when you have these, these sessions that we have where we're having installs in the morning, we're having two walkthroughs, and then we're coming on the field and doing it, like – I think you notice a lot of guys are playing a lot faster and more confident because he's keeping it simple, but also he's very particular in, in what he's expecting. But it's not a lot. So um, there's not a pressure of to get it right, but at the same time, um, you know what's expected of you and, and you know you're going to have the tools given to you to be successful out there on the field. And this offseason, just the totality of change mm -hmm. from front office players, coaches, the turf field. I mean, yeah. just what – what has that been like for you just to see yeah. all this going on? Uh, it's been fun. Um, you know, I think from uh, Mr. Harrison, the entire ownership group, down to uh, Adam Peters, down to DQ, down to Jaden, who we drafted, and bringing in Marcus and Jeff and all those guys, and down to leaders we have on our team, I think it was extremely specific on the way they tried to build this thing going into this year. Um, first, for having the right people, bringing in leaders, bringing in guys who love to compete. First thing that DQ said when he came here was in his first meeting, like, if you love to compete, this is going to be the place for you. And I love it. You know what I mean? I love bags and, and going at it with the DBs every day. Like, the little mundane stuff can seem a little boring, but that's – I think those are the, the – 
where you make the gains during the off season, where you're really focused on, I'm, hey, like I'm a, I'm gonna give all I got for this day, and I'm gonna get better, and then I'm a, I'm gonna learn from the film and come back tomorrow and ready to do it again. And he also understands like the the benefits of having breaks. Like he's given us breaks. We've had you know weeks off here and there that we can compose ourselves, but then come back and give it all we got. You know what I mean? And when you got a coach that understands the physicality of an entire season, where you guys do need breaks, by the same same time we're gonna get after it. Uh, it makes it fun as a leader because you can take that to your room and be like, yo, we got these, we got this week, you know what I mean? That's extremely important, but you know, we have this little break coming up um, where you're going to get your, your mind and your body and your soul right. So um, coming into this season, I'm, ex I'm really optimistic of what we can be this year. And I think it started with the foundation that uh, the ownership group and the entire staff has built. And now it's on myself as a leader to continue to hone that in into the locker room. But I think it's great because we have so many great leaders from all across the league. Uh, who have won and hell we got Bobby Wagner in there you know what I mean like, that's a hall of famer so like you know being able to have kind of guys like that that you can lean on that can sometimes take over that leadership role where it doesn't fall on one person I think it's uh uh extremely refreshing and knowing that everybody's on the same page and the message is the same um allows you to go out there with confidence and know what's expected of you uh, Terry you seem to spend many of your off seasons learning about things beyond football hobbies yeah. what have you did you do anything this off season so far to <laughs> hobbies or increase your knowledge of this the world around you uh that's a good question um play a lot of golf uh as, that day just keeps my competitive juices flowing um uh planning a wedding um that's going well and uh man i've just been grinding like honestly you know what i mean i've been hungry uh this off season like uh i started working out you know, pretty early and uh, you start to see guys like coming back and it's just fun to like to be here and compete and feeling like everybody's on the same page. You know what I mean? Like, and so for me, I'm, I'm going to grind every off season, but just this one just feels like it's the start of something, you know, new and special and the foundation of it is extremely important. And to be a part of that, to have a hand in that, um, you know, it's, it's an honor, you know, and I put a lot of expectation on myself to come out here and, and be the guy that I know I'm capable of and also like taking the next step and uh, being somebody that our quarterbacks that can trust and, and believe in. So um, this off season was pretty simple for me. Um, it was just really about, you know, working and, 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 and grinding and getting better. You talked about Jaden before. Is mm -hmm. there anything so far? I know we haven't seen everything, yeah. but in terms of his – his arm strength, the throws he's making, anything surprise you so far about the types of his, his ability in that regard? Definitely. Uh, I think after the second or third crosser that he threw, I started telling receivers, like, hey, you got to get your head around. You know what I mean? Because, again, each quarterback throws the ball differently and sees the field differently. So sometimes on crossers, a lot of quarterbacks may like to see you cross the ball and get into that open zone over there. Or if it's man flatten it off, they like to see you get open. With him, he has a really good anticipation over the middle of the field where he can make those throws and give you a chance to catch and run. And uh, he, he's really accountable too. Like we had a play today where he felt like he missed me and you know, it, it's not a big deal at all. You know what I mean? Him and I could talk through those things and there's, there's been a play that I've talked to him about I could do a better job of. But again, like that open, that open form of communication from a rookie I think is, is very rare. And I think it speaks to the confidence. He knows who he is, but he's also not afraid to say when he's wrong and he knows he needs room to improve. But his touch on the D balls is, is, is amazing. Um, you know, I love getting extra reps with pra after practice with him with just catching the top end of a deep ball. That's big for me. You know I mean? I, I get to track the ball over my shoulder, and it's big for him to be able to uh, get used to dropping the ball in the bucket. But he just naturally has an ability to throw the ball. He sees the windows really well. And now uh, he's just, you know, continue to get adjusted to the speed and the pass rush. Like, I think he's uh, these reps that he's getting are unbelievable during 11-on-11 11 11 because he's getting the field Payne and Allen and D.A. and – Cleveland Farrell, like, we got some dogs up there who are going to come after him. You know what I mean? And we got some great guys up front who are going to protect him. And so these reps, I feel like, are even better than just 7 on 7. 7 on 7, I think he could do in the sleep, to be fair. Like, he throws the ball really well. But uh, when you get this 11 on 11, two minute drill, you're putting him in game like situations. And I'm looking him in his eye, I'm like, yeah, we playing real ball now. <laughs> like, we, we, we playing. You know what I mean? And uh, you just see no, no uh, anxiousness in his game and his demeanor, which is extremely exciting. And, and then, you know, he's extremely lighthearted and he's always smiling. So 
he's joking with linemen, D line. He's just cool with everybody. And like I said, like for a rookie quarterback to come in like that, where guys are gravitating to him and he's not afraid to be who he is, uh, that's dope. I think he has a, a, a bright future for himself. Last one. The tough losses, the tough seasons. Mm -hmm can weigh on a player. Sure. You're entering the prime of your career. Mm -hmm. J.A. kind of mentioned it last year. All he cares about is winning. He yeah. wants to win now. Mm -hmm. Is there a sense of urgency? You obviously always want to win. Yeah. But knowing that, you know, you're, you're getting to the prime of your yeah. career, like, you want to win now. Yeah, I think that's a fair question. I think, um, you know, you start to evaluate when you – I'm in year six, and you notice how fast it goes. And um, I, I try not to put the cart before the horse or looking too far ahead. But at the same time, uh, you do want to win, and you want to be a part of – a winning culture and have a chance to win the Super Bowl and, and the playoffs and all those things. Like that's why we we do this uh, personally, and uh, I, I'm just excited with being a part of a, a organization and an environment where now like everybody's on the same page and the in the and the message is uniform and it speaks from the top down and uh, it reflects in the guys that they're bringing in. You know, all the guys that they brought in are guys who are hungry, who are competitors, who uh, not only fighting for spots, but we're going to help us win games. And when you're around an environment like that, like that, that makes you excited. It makes you hopeful. And um, you know, you don't know how that's going to turn out until we start playing games. But um, the foundation is extremely important. And I think this off season, we've really done a great job of building that. They have, and then when a Coach Quinn got here, building it with this team. So I feel like we're going to be going into this off season really um, knowing what we all got to do individually to become ready for camp, but. The, me uh, the message is clear to come back to camp ready to compete and, uh, and, and be ready to win. Thanks, Terry. Appreciate you guys.